Um, so next, I'd like to introduce Christopher Baker, who's one of our senior consultants who's been working with React for the last few years. In this talk, Christopher is going to explain how to leverage the new suspense components in React.Lazy to reduce your app's load time and improve your app's visual performance. So as Jason mentioned, I will be covering loading components and data with React Suspense. Just before I get started, I wanted to comment that I thought it was, I had used it a little bit in the past. I thought it was kind of complicated. And then I dove in to actually like use it from scratch and it's way easier than I thought it was, just as a, a preface. Um, first, the, the biggest, the, the intent behind it when the React team developed it was primarily for code splitting with React.Lazy. If you load your entire app up front, it's a lot slower. If you can split that into individual pieces that are loaded on demand when you need them, it drastically improves your initial load performance and in load time. What you're looking at right here is everything you need to use Suspense with React.Lazy. First thing you need is to use a dynamic import to get to your component. Not all build systems support this, but uh, Webpack does out of the box, which is I think what most React projects of using create React app, you're using Webpack. So most build systems support this, but that is something you need to keep in mind if you're planning to use Suspense with React at Lazy's, you need a dynamic import. Uh, the Suspense component itself, just like any other React component, uh, except that this Lazy component isn't a component yet. Under the hood, it's really just a promise that we will get a component in the future, which is kind of what drives this whole thing is that promise. Uh, while that promise is still resolving, it's going to show this fallback value, in this case, just loading, which you can stick any JSX in there you want, so you can render whatever loading spinner or thing you need. Um, and then when the lazy component is done loading, it will take away the fallback and it will display whatever those children are instead. And you can have any child anywhere inside that suspense can be a lazy loaded component. It doesn't have to be right in the same file like I've shown here, it can be a child of that be 15 levels deep. If it finds one of these lazy components, it will just go all the way up to the tree until it finds that first suspense. And that's the one that will trigger its fallback until it's done and it re-renders that whole tree. The second part, which to be honest, I'm more excited about, though still pretty easy, is data fetching. Um, the short explanation of how suspense works under the hood is that you throw a promise during your render and that is caught by that suspense, much like an error boundary or like a, a try catch. It'll catch that promise. And rather than throwing an error, it'll just wait till it resolves and then try again. Small caveat though, this API of throwing a promise is likely to change in a future React release. That's what they're working with now, but they don't really want you relying on this. But, you know, I like bleeding edge. So here we are. Um, as before, the suspense component usage is very much the same. In fact, this code block is exactly the same as before, except I have a data component instead of a lazy component. That inner component's a little different. In fact, it's more standard in this case. It's just a component. I've got this custom use async data hook that I wrote. We'll go cover that in just a moment. The fetch, the actual fetching is just a standard use fetch or whatever you do to get your data. As long as it's got a promise, it will work with this. This is that whole use async data hook though. It's again, still quite simple. The one annoying portion of doing this yourself is that you need to cache the value of the promise so that you don't create too many promises. And when that promise resolves, you need a way to save that value somewhere for future use. Unfortunately, you can't use things like um, use refs because when you throw it, it zeroes out those values. Uh, so you have to use some sort of external caching. In this case, I've used a weak map and I've used the function itself as the key. So it does mean if you use this particular use async data hook, uh, you will need that function to be, um, to have a static identity. If you put an inline function, this hook won't work and it can't detect when you're doing that. Um, but if you are using a more custom implementation specific to your use, you've got other ways to get around that. If you use keys, uh, I saw there's one implementation I saw that's using, that's called use fetch. I think if you like react use fetch is the name of the package, I think. Um, it uses the URL and the, um, the body parameters as that key. So there's a couple ways to approach it, but you do need some way to sort of cache the promise and the value for future use. This here is the actual magic. If it's a promise, throw it. That's really all you have to do. 
Um, if you throw a promise, it'll be caught by the suspense, as I previously mentioned. When that resolves, it'll re-render, so you don't have to worry about telling React to re-render. And that's how you use uh, promises with suspense. As I said, it's pretty straightforward. They'll probably change how they throw a promise because that is kind of weird, but whatever they come up with will probably have some similar structure, a function call or something. So if you are going to do this, I would say wrap it in a custom hook so that you can tweak that later and probably not have to change anything else. Uh, before I get to questions, I wanted to show, I've got a code sandbox demo that shows this exact process. So it's loading a component. Once that's loaded, it loads the data. This code in the slides is copied right out of this with one small change. Whenever I've got these uh, promises, I threw a, a one second delay on them just so that we can actually see it working rather than um, just having it be instant and not being very interesting. The app is exactly what you saw before. It's the React Lazy. As long as this resolves, has a promise, returns a promise, which resolves a component, React.Lazy will be happy. Um, got an inner component suspense. This is literally exactly the same as the slides. That inner component, when it does finally load, is a very similar one to before. It's got the suspense, but it's got this fetcher on the inside. And that fetcher um, is calling my use async data, which is exactly the same. The fetch data is, again, slightly different. It's got a delay so that we can actually see it. But as I showed when we were there, it loads, then it gets that, and then that one has another nested loading, so you can nest them however it works for you. And then I also wanted to call out a couple other resources. The official suspense and react.lazy docs, while fairly short, they're quite useful in explaining how and when to use it. We also have Bitovi's uh, previous React talks all on YouTube, and uh, Bitovi is doing some React consulting. Uh, if you need staff augmentation, you need assistance with uh, pushing your projects a little bit faster, anything along those lines, or architecture assistance, we are more than happy to help. Any questions? Any I actually have a question. Do you, uh, is, there, uh, is there any word on the street what different API they might move to instead of throwing promises? Not as far as I know, but if there is, I'm sure Adam will have an answer to that. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, I'm not sure. I've just seen lots of notes from them that's like this API will change. There's going to be a big announcement about data fetching in the next week, actually, probably, at the big react conf. Um, so we'll see what happens then. I think the promise range is probably going to stay because I can't think of another way to do it. But uh, they did say don't rely on it. They've mentioned that several times. Yeah, I was going to ask that next. Like, is there a more natural API that you that you think that would make more sense than the? No, but they're a clever bunch of fellows, so I, I got to wonder what they'll come up with. Yeah, when they do have that announcement, amongst whatever else they're announcing at that conference, we'll definitely be sure to post that to the React community, though. Yeah, sweet. And if relevant, if I can, I'll update my uh, slides and uh, code sandbox accordingly. Sweet.